welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Check that description box if you are curious about me or the podcast. Now, I recognize that this is a very possible, a real encounter that Shannon had. I realize that Shannon may have been having sex with a real woman and that that is what those of us who have heard the sex audio were hearing. Now, before I go on to what you saw in the title, what you clicked on this for, let's you and I bring everyone listening up to speed. You know, we don't want to assume everyone even knows what occurred on Wednesday. I'll make it quick. So on Wednesday morning, September 11th, those that follow Shannon Sharp on Instagram received a notification that he was going live, something he had never, ever done before. He has never gone live on his Instagram. So they click only to hear the sounds of what has been labeled as Shannon and a woman whom he calls Michelle in the audio having sex. The video is of the ceiling, no bodies. The video stops a little after a minute. Comments begin, of course, to pour in. A few minutes later, people thought who they thought was Shannon, I should say, post this on his Instagram. Beware, my at Shannon Sharp 84 Instagram was hacked this morning. My team and I are working vigorously to figure this out. Signed, Unk. However, later, Wednesday night, Shannon and his co-host on Nightcap, Chad Ochocinco Johnson, they do an emergency live. And we learn several things from Shannon himself. One of which is that the person who posted the hack statement on his Instagram wasn't actually him, but someone who worked for him. He admits that actually his account wasn't hacked and that it was an honest mistake on his part. I mean, he tells the whole sordid story. Take a listen. I'm embarrassed. Um, Someone that is extremely, extremely private um, and to have one of your most intimate details, the audio heard for the entire world to hear. Um, I'm embarrassed for a number of reasons. Um, People count on Shannon. Um, there are a lot of people that count on Shannon to be professional okay, at all times. Third, and I always try to be professional at all times, um, even when I'm behind closed doors. I'm very disappointed in myself, um, not for the act. Um, I think there are millions and billions of people uh, of consenting age that engage in activities. Um, <laughs> but, but to have activities. your most intimate detail on the audio to be heard, I'm disappointed in myself. Came in, I threw my phone on the bed. Um, gazed in an activity. <laughs> I did not know IG Live. I've never Why been on IG Live. I've never turned time. IG Live on. So I don't know how it works. An activity. And so um, all of a sudden, my other phone is going off and people are calling me FaceTime that I've never talked to a day in my life on FaceTime. And it didn't, I'm like, why are y'all calling me FaceTime? And after a while, Jamie, um, and he says, uh, Shannon, you on IG Live. I'm like, doing what? You know, I'm like, what about on IG Live for? I ain't hit no IG Live button. He says, uh, they can hear. I like, I'm like, so now, Ocho, you know, I say ask for patience. He said they can hear. And now I'm starting to get agitated again because you called me and say I'm on IG Live when I know I didn't click myself on IG Live. And he said they can hear me. I said, hear me doing what? He said, it sounds like you were having sex. Man, my heart sank. So during Nightcap, he is promoting the sponsor of the show, Rose Sparks, which just so happens to be a male sexual enhancement product for men. Predominantly is used, y'all, by men who suffer from erectile dysfunction. I think a lot of people have forgotten that in 2016, Shannon was diagnosed with prostate cancer, uh, but he did announce in 2022 that he was just fine, cancer-free. But for those of us who know about prostate cancer, it does affect a man's sexual desire. It affects his ability to get and keep an erection. And although a man who has had prostate cancer can have an orgasm, he can't ejaculate. You know, there's no semen that's produced, no liquid at all. So on this episode, Shannon jokingly but frequently flashed packets of the enhancement product throughout the entire episode. He giggles, he sniggles about the whole incident, even suggesting that his draws will one day see the Hall of Fame or at least reach Hall of Fame status. 
His company already has merch available for folks to buy, capitalizing off the situation that happened just a few hours earlier in the day. And we later learned the merch had sold out. Now, the next day, Thursday, Shannon was absent on his job at first take on ESPN. And some people, you know, putting one and two, one and one together, coming up with two, thought it was because Disney, who owns ESPN, had fired him similar to what they did to retired NBA player Paul Pierce. But turns out that was not actually true because he is off every Thursday and Friday anyway. And this just so happened to be a Thursday. So we then later learned from TNZ, who produced an exclusive story. They say they spoke to someone who's on the inside of Disney, who told them that Shannon will not be disciplined for his quote-unquote error, and that actually he'll return to work on Monday as was already planned. Now, Shannon does remind all of us on Nightcap that he has always told us how technologically challenged he is. Heck, he hates apps, he doesn't use apps, etc., etc. But everyone who has ever gone live on Instagram knows there really is no such thing for a man like him, hear me, hear me, a man like him him to make a mistake and go live on Instagram. I mean, if you use Instagram and you go live pretty frequently or ever so often and you leave the app open, it is possible for you or if it were me to actually make a mistake and go live. But again, not for someone like him, not for someone who hates apps, doesn't use apps, For a man who's never gone live before, it simply would not be possible for him to make a mistake. It wouldn't be an accident. It would only be, say it with me, staged. Now, hold up. Stay with me. You know, listen, he has never gone live and he has someone who runs his account. I mean, he told us that because he said the guy who told him, you know, who called him up and was like, you're live right now. This guy went into his account and actually stopped the video. This is a part of Shannon's story, for those of you who didn't hear NICAP. So we know that even though he said out of one side of his mouth, he runs his account, we also know he has someone he pays to run his account. When you have someone to, that you're paying to run your account, how, hello to all of you who are social media managers out there. You're not going to be running it yourself. I mean, then you're. why would you need the person? You're doing the job that you hired someone to do. Now, when you're rich, you have people that do these things. Not saying you can't suggest posts and may send them something to post for you, but you're not actively on your account like that. Now, I think too many of us have forgotten something that you can actually do on Instagram. What, you ask? Well, those of us who are on social media and we run social media accounts like Instagram, we know that you can actually pre-record a video and schedule it to stream live any day, anytime you want. I mean, many of us use this feature. So for those of you who don't know, you can actually go live on Instagram without actually being live. <laughs> this is what I believe happened in this situation with Shannon. Listen, it's possible for that audio we heard, that video of the ceiling to have simply been a phone sex session put to video. And that's why the movements didn't stack up to the audio. (laughs) You say, what do you mean, girl? The movements didn't stack up to the audio. Well, listen, I got to speak plain. For all of us who are having sex, we know that your lovemaking sounds are in cadence with your movements. They're not separate from your movements. On that video, audio, whatever you want to call it, it's lots of sound, but very little movement. And then all of a sudden we hear you growling, which by the way, guys, (laughs) we ladies love the growl. At least I do, but I digress. Not to mention the audio was way too clear, y'all. It sounded more like a phone call. Heck, was the phone right up to the alleged Michelle's mouth? But you say on nightcap, you randomly threw your phone on the bed and a man his size, his height, no doubt has a very large bed, maybe even a custom made bed like a lot of these athletes do. 
So it sounded more like a hyped up phone session simulating the act of sex versus it being an actual live act of sex. Not to mention, let's just say, y'all, it was actually live and Michelle is a real person. It's possible that Michelle did this and not Shannon. And Shannon simply covering from it for whoever this Michelle person is. Just like he told us, a lot of you know I covered the story, when he was hanging out with his gay fashion stylist, taking him on dates, I mean literal dates. So it wasn't just sitting courtside with him. It was they're out to dinner at night. And it's not a staff. It's just he and the guy or him and the guy. When all that was going on, he then fired the guy, you know, And then we later find out from the guy, okay, because he was interviewed by a blogger, that Shannon actually never did fire him. It was Shannon's way of protecting him because he was getting threats and Shannon was getting threats and it was a whole bunch of stuff. And Shannon wanted to put out there to the world so that people would leave that guy alone. Uh, Hey, he's no longer my stylist. I'm back with Shelly. So we know Shannon has a pattern of doing this, covering for people he you know, cares about or whatever. So it's very possible, as I said, this could have been Michelle, this alleged Michelle. And um, Shannon was just covering for her saying it was my mistake when really it may have been something she had done. Now, the big question for those of us who definitely believe this was stage, be it live or a pre-recorded live stream, is why? Why would Shannon Sharp stage something like this, risking the new multi-year, multi-million dollar deal he just signed. Remember, his contract was just renewed. It was three months ago with ESPN. Why would he do that? Why? Well, I think there are only two reasons why he would stage it. First, and the most obvious, is that the gay rumors, the taunts, the DMs he says he gets, really got to Shannon, y'all, more than we could have ever imagined. I mean, I personally believe it was staged to stave off these rumors. He did say the rumors bothered his three kids, his sister, his other family members. But if that's the case, one would then say, well, why stage it now, MBMO? Why wouldn't he have staged it later, right, during the height of the rumors, Well, I got to tell you, first of all, the rumors actually haven't died down. I mean, quite the contrary. I mean, after that green suit, orange bag incident, don't know what I'm talking about. You can Google it. The rumors only increased. But why would he do it now versus a few months ago? Well, to me, it makes sense that he would do it now because, well, first of all, it would have been too obvious had he done it at that time. We would have been like, okay, dude, really? The gay rumors just came out today. You stage this tomorrow. Are you, you know, this video kind of, you know, goes live tomorrow. It would have, the timing would have, uh, he, he knows better. He knows that we would have said, okay, really? But also, for those of you who don't know, around that time, he was renegotiating. He and his team They were renegotiating his contract with Disney for his job on first take at ESPN. So you wouldn't have staged it then because, well, that's really risky. But if you ink the deal, the ink is now dry. We're now in September. He inked that deal, the renewal in June. Okay, this would be perfect because, well, you're valuable. I mean, Shannon has trended several times over the last three months. I mean, this was big. You know, his name trending big in a big way, but he's trended several times. So they know Shannon is very valuable to them. He's valuable to ESPN. The numbers are out there. The days that Shannon appears on first take, which is Monday through Wednesday, the numbers are the highest they are all week. So if he says, I made a mistake, and of course, all those people at ESPN know how tech challenged he actually is. I mean, heck, Shelly does everything for him, including respond to simple emails because he doesn't send emails. He doesn't know how, he says, right? So it wouldn't be far-fetched for those people to believe, well, he, he could have made a mistake because he didn't know what he's doing. But see, for people like me and you, especially if you go live on Instagram, you know there's no way it could have been a mistake. And this is what bothers me about this whole situation because I like Shannon. What bothers me about the whole situation is what people are doing, right? Right? I talk about common sense a lot because I personally believe common sense should be king. Common sense should come before our education. It should come before our spirituality. 
Too many people have simply let go of common sense. And God forbid, if whatever the situation is involves anything spiritual, it's like people go in a room and they literally turn the lights off, a.k.a. they turn their common sense off. So then basic things, the one plus one equals two part of ourselves, people just ignore that. They just act as if they don't really know what's going on. Listen, every person who's ever gone live on Instagram knows there's no way you could make a mistake to go live. See, that's common sense. That's the one plus one part of ourselves equals two part of ourselves. And yet our bias that's going in the room and turning the lights off comes in. What's the bias? We all like Shannon. I do. He's funny. He's country. I mean, he's down to earth. Heck, he's unk. So we then bypass our common sense because, well, we like Shannon. No, the truth is we know the fact. There's no way you can go uh, have a mistake going live on Instagram, particularly if you're someone like him who, who you don't even open your apps. You said you don't even hardly have any on your phone, right? So you wouldn't have made no mistake. We know that. We just don't want to believe that this dude would stage this because we say, well, why, 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 why? Well, guys, listen, have we also forgotten how fragile, all my guys, we love you, but we got to speak plain. Have we forgotten how fragile the male ego is? See, that too is common sense. I know my man told me a long time ago, something had happened and I had said something that was very disrespectful and we were kind of trying to fix it, if you know what I mean. And he said to me, I told you long ago, A man is a tiger in a paper sack. So, you know, a man is a man. But they, you know, have this ego that's very fragile. And I believe that those gay rumors did more damage to him. And to us, we can't understand that. We would say, I mean, we're not gay, right? We would say, well, well, child, I mean, it's 2024. Just tell the truth. I mean, look at all these people walking around, you know, they out here halfway naked in the streets. So why not just go tell it, tell it, live your truth, be like Bruce and be like Caitlin or whatever. But we, we're we not in his mind. We don't know. Uh, we all know that fear is very irrational, Right. Uh, fear makes people believe things that simply aren't true. Like he may believe he would lose his career. He may believe he would no longer be unk. This is if the gay rumors are true or what have you. I personally believe he's bisexual. I've heard Shannon say I'm not gay. I think in Shannon's mind, gay is one thing, bisexual is another. And I know a lot of people like to say that stuff. And you may even get in the comments and say it. But listen. Gay is gay is bisexual, gay, 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 gay. That's what that's what it really is, folks. The fact that people can sleep with the other sex doesn't make them special. No, baby, you just gay. <laughs> that's all it is. And you have you also have the ability to sleep with the opposite sex. And most times when people sleeping with the opposite sex who are gay, they're doing it to get something. It's always some sort of a negotiation in their mind, even if the other person doesn't know about it. Right. It's not because you just so like both sexes. I mean, we need to quit quit the crap, right? So in his mind, there could be a lot of things, y'all, going on. And in addition to his ego that we just wouldn't understand or we're not privy to. So I think those rumors and the constant, I mean, people are constantly taunting him about it, um, even though he, you know, you know, has denied it. I think it really, really got to him. And see what's happening now. I mean, the fact that he said on Nightcap, that Cat Williams called him was like, you ain't gay today. Like, even if he did call, which I suppose he did because he wouldn't make that up, hopefully, on the man. Why would you need to tell us that? And then if you also listen to what he said, he said he described his behavior. And it was very specific the way he described it. I thought, hmm, so- sounds like something a therapist may have told him. He said it was just me engaging in healthy male activity. Well, why do you need to say all that? Why do you need to phrase it that way? I mean, and then you go on to giggle and sniggle and talk about it in a very unprofessional way. So somebody gave him that phraseology. So at the end of the day, that's one theory that that's why he staged it. Again, I'm speaking about those who believe it was staged, meaning he knew what was going on. Maybe someone you know, did the video, but it wasn't actually live. I don't believe that video was live. I believe it was a pre-recorded live. OK, the second theory, of course, is this. That maybe Shannon has some business deal in the works that we're just not privy to right now. I mean, it could be that whole spark thing he kept 
referencing rose sparks, the enhancement pills. I mean, how do we know in a few months he's not going to be the spokesperson? And how would he frame it to us? Well, you know, the video came out and they reached out to me because they were sponsor anyway. And they said, hey, you want to be our spokesperson? I said, why not? I mean, he would set it up to us as if this was something new when in actuality the the uh, thing was in the works the entire time. All I'm saying, guys, as I wrap this up now, is one thing for certain, two things for sure. It wasn't an accident and it was staged. But the real reason why, that's the part we may never know. We may never know why he really staged it. But definitely there was a reason. Nothing just happens. We don't just do stuff. And you definitely don't do something like that unless you have a, in your mind, a most notable reason. Now, some of you may wonder why I refer to Michelle as the alleged Michelle, the alleged woman. Well, here's something. I learned this the hard way when I was an investigative interviewer. If you can't see what's going on, well, you hear what's going on, and our minds then fill in the blanks. You understand? Because, and what does our mind pull from? It pulls from similar situations and things of that nature. But I learned that you really have to actively practice. When you can't see what's going on, you can only hear what's going on. You have to really be self-aware to say, I can't fill in the blanks because I don't know. I mean, how many times can all of us think of situations, excuse me, of course, not having to do with sex, but other situations where you heard something, but you couldn't actually see it. But then when you saw it, it was nothing like you thought it was that you heard. It's like, wait, that's what that was. I thought it was something else. And I think this is a situation like that. We did not see a woman that sounded like a woman. How do we know it wasn't somebody else? How do we know it wasn't someone else? How do we know it wasn't Shannon's voice merged with the voice of someone else? This is the day of AI after all, right? How do we know? We, we saw no bodies. We didn't see Michelle. Matter of fact, on Nightcap during the episode that I referred to that happened Wednesday night later the day after the incident, he said on there, everybody's now trying to find any Michelle I've ever been connected to. Uh, y'all, he, and he, he kept saying, and you'll never find it out. And I thought, yeah, because there ain't no Michelle. Because, yeah, see, in this day and time of the Internet, we could find out. We people, and there will be people do it. Now, I don't care enough to do it. Uh, I'm not in someone's life that deep. But there will be people go back through all his photos. I mean, he even said on there, people are going through all my Instagram posts. They're going through all my threads. They're going through all my Facebook. They're going through all my ex accounts, trying to see when was I ever posed with a woman named Michelle. And he said they think that he said people are even calling people saying, who is Michelle? So evidently somebody, you know, or his people are coming back to tell him people are trying to find out. Maybe it's the media. Maybe it's just random bloggers. Who knows who is Michelle? And he kept saying, you're never going to figure it out. Well, we would never. That's a strong word. Figure it out. If Michelle didn't exist. Well, then, yeah, we would never figure that out because it could have been somebody you just paid to pretend. And you just called out a random name of Michelle on this alleged, you know, supposed sex incident. You know, it sounded like sex. We know the sounds of sex, right? But we didn't see anything. We didn't see enough to know what that really was. We can only say this is what it sounded like. And I know that may seem very odd, but I'm telling you, if you're like me and you've worked with people, and especially if you worked in the areas I have, and tons of you have, Um, you know that you have to really be cautious when you cannot see something. You have to say, now, wait a minute. Naturally, I'm human. My mind is going to fill in the blanks. But I have to remember, I didn't see anything. I only heard something. Um, So I need to wait until I can find out more information. In this case, we're not going to find out more information unless there is some beef going on behind the scenes with Shannon and somebody where maybe, you know, you know, something's going on and maybe that person will speak to the media later. But right now, I think all we're going to get is Shannon's explanation of this situation, which already are have has holes in it. I mean, you posted on Instagram. We thought it was you. you it turns out it was someone who, who worked for you. Um, 
you know, you're saying, you know, you fired the stylist, but then the stylist himself says you never fired him. He's, as a matter of fact, he said, I'm on the road with him right now. I'm going to the game. I'm going to meet him, you know, at the game. So, you know, you already have a habit of trying to, quote unquote, cover your tracks for things that may be nefarious. So at the end of the day, these are my thoughts on the trending story. Leave yours below. And of course, I'll be talking with you on the next podcast. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't enjoy it, of course. You always have that option, and I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.